This is a painting flow. That is the order of operations for painting. So the proper painting flow is you have um, what's called a dry palette. And that's basically just a plastic tray that has little cups in it that you can put dabs of paint in. You want the little cups because that way you can drop drops of water in as well and thin and mix in those little cups. You will want, uh, so it's not, it's like a plastic circular, like maybe six to eight inches in diameter with some divots in it. And those are what I'm talking about is the cups. And in the middle will be like a flat area and you can either keep the, the mech that you're painting there or um, some miscellaneous other tool there or a cup of water there, which is important. You will also need a mug that, that you intend to have destroyed because it'll be used as a painting mug and it'll inevitably be ruined and unrecoverable. Just some ceramic mug, doesn't matter what it is. Um, or you could even use a fancy crystal glass, I don't care, whatever you want to use, but a coffee, coffee mug is perfectly fine. You then fill that with water. This does not need to be filtered water. This does not need to be clean water. I've noticed no difference in paint, uh, painting jobs that come out from extremely disgusting, dirty water versus pristine, freshly replaced water. But you might want to just replace it every once in a while just to make sure that the paint, that when you're cleaning a brush, it is actually clean. But I haven't really, the amount of paint that you need to have in that water to make it not usable anymore as a cleaning solution would be very high compared to how much is required to make the water look disgusting. So if the water looks disgusting, it's still probably perfectly good. So anyway, you fill that mug with water, um, about two thirds full. Um, that you will use a lot, including before you even put any paint on your brush. You then take your brush and um, you First, dip it in the water to get it wet, and you, I kind of swish it around quite quickly, but do not hit the brush hairs onto the sides of the cup or the and never the bottom of the cup. And you do not leave the brush in the cup ever. You instead only use it, swish it back and forth really fast to wash off paint so that paint doesn't get into the dry in the ferrules of the brush because that'll destroy your brush. Um, just in between switching colors and whatnot, you, you swish the brush rapidly in the cup um, to uh, clean off the paint. So you'll need that cup there. You will also want a small eyedropper or water bottle, a uh, little squeeze bottle that'll allow you to drop water out. This is for adding water to your paints, to thin your paints when you're actively painting. Another option is that you take a fairly big brush um, or a brush that can hold a lot of paint and use that as a water, dedicated water brush. That is every once in a while you'll dip it into your water cup and then you'll kind of release the water on the edge of the little divots in your dry palette. Um, and I'm calling it a dry palette for a reason, but basically it's just a piece of plastic. That's a dry, a wet palette is when you have like a, a wet paper towel down inside a bowl and you intentionally put the paints into the paper towel while it's wet, maintaining its wetness. That's a wet palette. So ignore that. We're never going to talk about that again. We're only going to use dry palettes. So regular palette, which is called a dry palette. Um, so you, um, you use your paint from your cup. I'm oh, sorry, you, you dr drop whatever paint or primer in one of the little little divots in your palette and then you add water either by using the dedicated water brush that never gets any paint on it it's only used for dripping water onto the paint to give it extra paint or extra water you can then use the end of your the non hair end of your whatever brush you're using to paint to kind of mix the water and the paint together kind of just kind of swish it around or you can use bamboo sticks or some other thing that's kind of a waste of wasteful thing you will also want to have a folded up um, paper towel. Um, this you will use very frequently. This paper towel, you will kind of drag your brush across to help clean it. In between swishing it in the water cup and the paper towel, you will kind of stroke your brush against those two to clean off paint in between switching paint colors or whatnot with your brush. 
And no, you will not be able to have multiple brushes for different colors. You'll end up being forced to use a few specific fine brushes because they'll be going to be costly. So you have to use a few fine brushes to um, um, to switch between colors. So you'll do this every time you switch colors. Um, you then, uh, now that you've kind of prepped your painting, you um, can also, uh, you've got your paints, you, you put your primer on, brush it on, then you wait for it to dry, then you will put your undercoats on, um, which will be like your black paint, wherever your gun barrels and missile faces and things like that are, or exhaust vents or engines, you'll do undercoat. It won't look like that in the end, it's just black undercoat for future purposes, um, and you'll let that dry. You will then put silver or gun metal down. Um, on the appropriate parts, that is all your gun barrels and possibly on the faces of your rocket launchers. Um, this is going to completely cover the black paint that you just put. But because remember, you're supposed to always thin your paints, assuming you've been thinning your paints. This, count, this includes metal paints too, metallics. For metallics, you want to use a crappy brush because if you use a nice brush, it's going to ruin it really quickly. Metallic paints tend to be very rough on brushes. So you don't want to use fine, nice brushes. You want to use one of your lower quality brushes for your metallic paints. But you thin the metal paint, you have to actively stir it because even after it set, settles for, it sits for a short time, the metal particulates are going to collect the bottom and it's going to look like a slightly different color than it was before. When you stir it, the, the metal particulates will get emulsified back and it'll change color back to its original metallic, although thinned color. You'll then brush this on all to your black surfaces uh, that are supposed to be me metal color. And the black will act as a, a undercoat that'll slightly show through wherever the uh, the silver or gunmetal color is sort of thin, and this will produce an interesting, neat effect that it looks much better than just having a really heavy, thick silver or gunmetal color um, on top of your mech. Oh, and by the way, if you're painting gold colors for some reason. You want to use a brown underlayer, not a black underlayer. Black is for silver and silverish colored metallic paints only. For gold or brass or bronze, if you were for some reason wanted to use those colors in your mechs, you use brown as the underlayer. Okay, now you've got your metal uh, and your underlayer, which is black, which has been covered up everywhere except your cockpit. You should have painted your cockpit black too, just which you're gonna leave basically forever black um, until you want to detail your cockpit later um, and now your the rest of your mech should just be your primer color you're now going to take what's called the base coat which is like the main color of every part uh, and you're gonna just paint your mech with the base coat now many mechs are just solid all one base coat color like Liao um, even Davian might be Kurita certainly is. It's all red uh, if you want to do a uh, sort of light, um, which is the easiest, which is what you should do. Um, and Steiner, you'll notice, will have a blue section for most of the mech. And then, like, the right arm and maybe parts of the right leg and maybe the right side of the right torso will be white. And so those will be considered the base coats. What I have noticed is that you don't want too many base coats on a mech. Like if you if you have more than two or three colors as a base coat, it starts looking really busy and it's not it's just not pleasing. You're going to have enough color accents with your various details and your guns and your missile packs, but if you do more than one, two or three base coat colors, uh, it's going to not look so good. So Steiner has two base coat colors just because it's blue and white. Kurita Sword of Light has one base coat color, which is basically just gory red. And whatnot. There's a couple others that like Liao, some sort of green colors, so you you pick them. You can also do camouflages and like a like what I do with Davian is I will tend to put a camouflage color. They since they're a more of a tactical house than a than a uh party house, they're <laughs> they um tend to be more serious with their military tactics and so I usually represent that as painting them camouflage whereas I might paint the other houses 
base colors uh, party or their their parade colors. Um, so Davian will end up having three base colors. That is, they'll have a um, they'll have like a plague brown that covers most of the mech. Then they'll have a um, like thin charred brown uh, strips and khaki as the spiral as like a spiral pattern at forming their camouf camouflage um, and we'll talk about that later when we do the Davian mech painting um, but anyway you, you can have the various different choices but stay away from more than one two or three base coat colors because you're going to end up wash putting a wash color over that you're going to end up putting details maybe even cockpit colors lens flares all kinds of other little insignias maybe and so if you do too many colors it's just going to look ugly and besides you also again don't want to become a pro painter and you don't want to spend too much time so just stop just do one two or three base coats uh, base colors and preferably only one or two and then stop if you enjoyed this video, please go hit the subscribe button at the uh, and that way I'll be motivated to make even more videos.